Hey y'all, it's Victory Monday. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Carolina Panthers 24 to 16, move up to six and eight uh, on the year and keeping slim, but hope, hope alive for a potential playoff berth. I'm your host, Daniel J. Today, we're going to be talking about the good, the bad and ugly of this victory. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. That way you're notified of our daily segments and weekly lives. With that being said, guys, I'm Daniel J. This is State of the Steelers and welcome to the huddle. So the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Carolina Panthers 24 to 16 in, in my opinion, a uh, one of their most dominant victories yet of this year. You know, the, the score will indicate a much closer game than it really was. And we'll be talking about the ugly as far as why it was that close. But before we get there, let's talk about the good. Uh, when it comes to this game, in my opinion, uh, you're looking at offensively. You're looking at Deontay Johnson. You're looking at Najee Harris. Uh, George Pickens had an amazing first half. Uh, and you're looking at the offensive line. And so my biggest game ball, if I was only going to give you know, a single game ball to one of these guys, they'd probably go to the offensive line. They dominated the entire game yet again. They um, allowed... Uh, for 156 yards rushing for the Pittsburgh Steelers and only let up one sack um, on, on Mitch Trubisky on the day. And so, you know, you saw power running from Najee. You saw him running over people. You saw himself, Mitch Trubisky, and Jalen Warren get in the end zone on the, on the ground. Offensive line gets the game ball. But as far as the good offensively, you know, Pickens had an amazing catch. Um, you're looking at Deontay Johnson kind of redeeming himself, you know, going uh, 10 for 10 as far as targets and receptions, 98 yards with a 19 long. Only thing he didn't do is get in the end zone. They didn't target him in the end zone, so it is what it is. He did what he could with the with the opportunities that he had. And in my opinion, he, he kind of redeemed himself a little bit. You know, I think that when you look at Deontay, he may be a guy that needs to get into a rhythm. He may need a guy that needs to get uh, – some chemistry down with his quarterback. And up until recently, he was used sparingly, and maybe perhaps that got him out of rhythm. You know, last week against uh, the Baltimore Ravens, he was targeted a little bit more. And this week he was targeted again, and this time he was able to, you know, come through. Maybe perhaps that was because of the, uh, uh, you know, getting some more reps in and targets his way. And so I think Dante Johnson did a fantastic job yesterday, uh, yesterday and was a key – key player in the victory he he was able to move the sticks when he um in key situations and big downs where in some you know big key moments here you know in his career in the past you know he either dropped the ball ran backwards or you know made a costly penalty which we'll talk about again um you know to kill the drive so to speak and so you know i thought he did a lot better of a job this week he seemed more poised. He was definitely in this game. He wanted to win and he wanted to show up and he did in, in good fashion. Najee Harris was showing up as well. He was strong. He was running over people. He was, you know, you know, there's one thing that I've noticed about Najee is he's starting to get his burst back. You know, before there was a lot of uh, criticism towards Matt Canada because they would run Najee to the uh, outside and for right reasons. He was looking slow at the time. But here recently, it's like he's getting to the edge. He's not getting there with excellent speed, but he's getting there with burst and an acceleration that he didn't have earlier this season. And it's showing up in the uh, in his runs and what he's able to do uh, throughout the game. I think he's getting healthier. I think he's getting his speed back. And I think that he's getting chemistry with this offensive line. These are all good things. You know, even if the Pittsburgh Steelers don't find themselves in the playoffs, which let's be realistic, they probably won't. Um, I think this is a good confidence builder uh, going into the end of the season. And I think this is going to be a confident team at the end of this season. And so um, kudos to uh, Najee Harris, Deontay Johnson, the offensive line, and George Pickens as well. You know, like I said, he had a, a crazy catch down the sideline. Uh, the guy can just catch the ball, you know, uh, just throw it to him. And so <clears> – <throat> The good on the defensive side, I'm going with T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith, Cam Hayward, and o and, and Ogunjobi. The front guys, they handled the trenches. 
they held the um, they held the Carolina Panthers, who had been rushing, you know, to win their last couple of games, and that's how they've been able to move the ball. They held them as a team to 16 carries for 21 yards. That is fantastic. That's that's just slightly over one yard per carry. That is amazing. You couldn't ask for that. They also attacked Sam Darnold, and they got him down four times. It should have been sacked more than that, but they got him four times to the ground. T.J. Watt, Alex Highsmith, Cam Hayward were dominant on the field. They were applying pressure. It was a homecoming game for Alex Highsmith, and he showed up huge. Congratulations, man. It was a um, it was a good game for him and the, and the defense. I thought the defense played well. Uh, and, uh, you know, T.J. Watt's looking healthy again. You know, he, he, I noticed there wasn't a uh, – there's been a band on his arm on the side in which he tore uh, had that minor tear in his pec. Um, that's not on his arm anymore. He seems to be getting healthier with whatever issue he was having with his knee. Uh, the bend is there, the speed, acceleration, and he he did a fantastic job. You know, kudos to this front defensive line. They controlled the trenches, and they effectively won the game here. And so um, on, the de- on the defensive side. Now let's talk about the bad. Offensively, Dotson, you gotta, you can't be getting those false start penalties, brother. You know those things need to stop. Uh, they they definitely do. Um, and in my opinion, you know, it's been an ongoing situation for for Dotson with these false starts. You got to be a little bit more disciplined. You got to understand what's going on, what you're doing, and where you're at on the field. And, and remember this this the the count. I mean. You know, in my opinion, it might be just too much going on in his head. I, I don't know, but it needs to stop. He needs to be more disciplined in that situation. Um, and and offensively, the bad for me, zero targets to Pat Fryermuth. I, I That's not good. Now, I don't know if that's on the quarterback, that's on Matt Canada, but that can't happen. You know, Pat Fryermuth is a guy that um, needs to, to – to, he's a guy that – can move the chains. He could. He can help you out in the red zone area. Um, he helps over the middle. I, I don't understand how they couldn't, you know, get him a target. Um, but that's that's. I mean, it's not concerning. You know, you win the game, and it's a little bit nitpicky at this point. But you know, Pat Fryermuth is a key pivotal role in this team, and you know, it's um, you know, it's concern. I mean, is it? In my opinion, it might be a quarterback thing, not wanting a target over the middle. Um, versus the uh, the coordinator, you know, because, you know, under this coordinator with Kenny Pickett, that's one of his main guys. And so I thought Pat Farmouth would have been targeted a little bit more. Uh, but that's what I have for the bad on the offense. It's not very much. I think they did fantastic. They had a third quarter opening drive that went for like 22 plays in over 12 minutes. Freaking amazing. That was the best drive all season. Uh, took so much time off the clock and just really – could have put out the game had there not been the 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 ugly part of the game. And we'll get to that part in a minute. The bet on the defense is going to be the coverage. You know, you allowed Sam Darnold, a guy who hasn't passed for more than a what, 140 yard average is what he's been averaging the last two starts. Uh, Sam Darnold ended up throwing for, you know, 225 yards, one touchdown. But, you know, he ended up making some throws down the field on third and 11 and third down and long. And you, What's going on there? You know, Robert Spillane on one of them, he couldn't keep up with with uh, Hubbard on on a uh, on a pass to the running back. That's that's been an ongoing issue. Those type of things need to stop. It didn't kill the team today. Um, you know, it's one of those things where this defense is kind of bend but don't break. But you know, they got to be able to stop that. They really do. And so, in my opinion, <clears throat> those are my bads. You got to work on the. Um, uh, on the pass play, you know, James Pierre allowed a deep shot down the middle. Um, in my opinion, I think that may have been he was expecting safety help. That's why he was looking back so much and was kind of trailing off to the sideline uh, in case somebody came underneath. Uh, I, I think he expected over-the-top help, and that's why he was doing what he was doing. I'm talking about James Pierre there on that long pass. But, you know, 
Deep passes over the middle. I mean, to the receivers were horrible. Cam Sutton had a uh, pass interference on the uh, five-yard line. That I mean, he did get there ahead of time, but it was a little bit bang-bang, in my opinion, when you look at it in real time. So it could have gone either way, um, you know, but they, they ended up calling him for it. I, he was being aggressive. He was you know, trying to make a play. So it's not something that I find too, too bad. Now, time for the ugly. And there's two two of them, in my opinion. The first one comes at a guy who potentially, you know, that not potentially, the guy that did, um, what is the word I'm looking for? He um, redeemed himself when that's Deontay Johnson. And I'm talking about the personal foul penalty, the taunting penalty after he converted a key third down that put the Steelers in a potential first and goal situation. And then he goes to catch the ball and then unnecessarily and unprovoked. I mean, perhaps maybe something was said to Deontay before the play was started. But, you know, at that point when he caught the ball, he went up to the player, the, the defensive back, and hovered over him, looked down upon him, and was some saying some stuff, right? And it was just horrible. You don't want to do that at any point of the game, but much less, you know, right when you get into the red zone. Cost the team 15 yards, pushed them back. Fortunately for the Steelers, they were able to convert again on the third down to Deontay Johnson, I believe. And so – you know, he, he ended up redeeming himself, but those type of mistakes against better teams will kill you. And that's what's been happening this entire season to this to, to a certain degree. You know, when they've played um, above 500 or 500 and above teams and they've made those mistakes, it's not ended well. And so and it's been plays like that, you know, when you're looking at some of these games where, you know, the Steelers had lost by a uh, less than or equal to a, you know, one score game. It's because of some of these penalties that change the outcome of the game because they killed drives and yada, yada, yada. Fortunately for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they were able to recover from this, but you can't do that, man. And so, but the ugliest one, in my opinion, and the most costly one, this guy in this situation right here. And for those that are on the audio only, which I recommend you guys go check me out on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, anywhere you find your podcast, uh, just search up State of the Steelers and I'll come out. But this picture here is Marcus Allen in the sideline huddle for the uh, Carolina Panthers uh, during a break before they are uh, to punt the ball, giving them essentially a uh, first down. It was fourth down and forever. And so uh, prior to this play happening, the Pittsburgh Steelers were, um, they had gotten beaten deep. And then um, there was two sacks that knocked them out of field goal range. They were fixing a punt the ball. And this gentleman here goes and does this unprovoked unnecessarily. It's not like he'd been on the field. He wasn't playing on defense or anything like that. He just shows up, goes into the uh, the opposing team sideline huddle and starts talking trash and gives them a first down. Gives them a first down. And they turn that first down into points. And they kept that team in the game. No doubt about it. If, the, if this guy does not do this bonehead play, the Pittsburgh Steelers are walking out of this game without – any worry in the world it's a it's an easy game it's a um um it's smooth sailing it's there's no potential anything there's no need for an onside kick it's kneel down city earlier and so you know mike tomlin needs to do something about this you know these penalties this the false starts the pre-snap penalties the the personal fouls you know those are disciplinary issues and those are issues that against better teams are going to cost you the victory. And so I would anticipate, you know, well, you know, I get it. He wants guys that, uh, you know, you say, whoa, versus sick them. But, you know, to a certain extent, this is hurting the team. And so this needs to stop. There needs to be some discipline and accountability when it comes to that. I'm not on the I'm not on the train of saying cut or fire um, uh, Marcus Allen you know, release him from the team because of what he did. But, you know, I wouldn't have put him back in the game unless, you know, there's no other choice. You know, he could be, you know, the, uh, you know, whatever he does play on special teams, he could be a specialist in that position. And this can't replace him. And so 
I don't know. He's, I just, I was just so f- upset about that play. The bonehead play should, there's no room for that in professional sports and professional football. He's out there playing. He's might as well be doing a TikTok while you're at it. It's super upsetting, super upsetting. But besides all that, beyond all that, the Pittsburgh Steelers ended up winning the game, going 24, uh, winning 24 to 16, moving up to six and eight. The Chargers won, so the likelihood that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to get a playoff spot is very, very minimal. They really shot themselves in the foot losing to the Baltimore Ravens last week. But you can only move forward and you can only gain. Uh, you can only develop into a better team. I anticipate Kenny Pickett coming back this week, and I anticipate this team taking another step forward. Um, they have a short week. They're playing Saturday night against the uh, Vegas Raiders. It'll be a, it's, they'll be celebrating the Immaculate Reception, the 50-year anniversary, retiring Franco Harris, Franco Harris's jersey number. It's gonna be an awesome night. Uh, please hit that like and subscribe button, ring that notification bell. With that being said, guys, I'm Daniel J. This is State of the Steelers. Peace.